The clock is ticking for millions of Americans who've gotten behind on their rent payments during the pandemic. The federal moratorium on evictions is set to expire June 30th, and it's facing new legal challenges in court. The government is now racing to allocate more than $40 billion in emergency rental assistance to those in need as landlords try to keep their businesses afloat as well. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has this story. You okay? Before the pandemic, single mother of two, Tania Rogers, says she had never missed a rent payment. What happened with your work when the pandemic hit? So when the pandemic hit, my job was essentially um, cut short and I was told that we had to stay home as the rest of, um, well, pretty much the rest of the world. Rogers' paychecks from her job at a school in Washington, D.C. stopped coming, but the rent checks kept piling up. February is kind of when I hit real like rock bottom where I didn't have any money anymore, no reserves, no anything. So you're about $6,000 behind on rent mm -hmm. right now. How does that feel? Um, it doesn't feel good. I mean, I'll be real, it doesn't feel good. With her seven-year-old and two-year-old boys still out of school, Rogers drives for Uber Eats to try to pay the bills, bringing the kids along for the ride. You have to get off your car to give the order to someone. My kids are in a car by themselves. I'm gonna be looked at as being neglectful. And that's not right. You know, what other choices do I have? If I don't do Uber Eats, we don't have anything. You know, we don't have money. I can't get groceries and whatnot. Um, I can't pay the rent. You know, the situation is already I can't pay the rent. Rogers is one of more than 8 million Americans currently behind on rent and facing the risk of eviction. Just for comparison, it's, it's, it's about twice as many uh, homeowners that lost their homes during the foreclosure crisis. Twice as many homeowners who actually did lose their homes during the financial crisis are now facing the threat of eviction today. That's right. A federal moratorium on evictions has kept millions of Americans in their homes during the pandemic. It was first passed last spring as part of the CARES Act and was extended by the CDC until June 30th. The uh, eviction moratoriums that have been in place, that's allowed people some security, but it's also some uncertainty because it's had to, been, uh, had to be extended so many times. Earlier this month, a federal judge ruled that the CDC had exceeded its authority and the eviction ban was unconstitutional. But after an appeal from the Biden administration, the judge said Friday the eviction freeze can temporarily stay in place. We knew from the beginning that the moratoriums were just a Band-Aid approach to being able to protect renters during the crisis. Advocates say the eviction ban has been critical for public health, keeping people in their homes and not forced into tight quarters during the pandemic. But it's not foolproof. Researchers at Princeton tracking five states and 28 cities found landlords have still filed for more than 337,000 evictions during the pandemic. Her landlord refusing to comply with the CDC and state moratorium on evictions. We had rented it to her knowing, you know, it would be just a year rental. By November, she was behind on rent. Her landlord filed for eviction. It's been horrible. Dean Hunter is an advocate for a small landlord's group in Washington, D.C. He supported the moratorium at the onset, saying tenants adversely impacted by COVID should not be evicted. But he says the ongoing ban now risks putting small landlords out of business. They're small, small businesses, and they should be treated as such. Do you think people forget that some of these landlords are also taking care of their own families, that they need to pay their own bills too? Yeah, there's a narrative that all landlords are, are are multimillionaires and, 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 and large corporations, but it's just not true. Um, you know, investing in real estate is a small business, right? You own a rental property, uh, you produce an income. It's been a great way uh, to build uh, generational wealth. Hunter says the D.C. and federal governments should steer their efforts toward the more than $40 billion in federal aid passed since December for both renters and landlords. Much of the money has been slow to get to those in need. The government, frankly, is not doing enough to get the tenants to apply. Where are the TV commercials? Where are the bus ads, right? Where are the uh, uh, celebrity sponsorships telling people to apply for rental assistance? There is more money available for rental assistance than there ever has been. We're in a bit of a race against the clock now to try to get this money to renters in time to prevent their eviction by the time the federal eviction moratorium expires, potentially at the end of June. With rent prices going up in many cities across the U.S., some argue rental assistance for both tenants and small landlords should be permanently expanded to help address homelessness and housing affordability.
Census Bureau data shows the median price of rent increased nearly $200 this March compared to just one year earlier. The 10 million or so renter families who were struggling so mightily to pay the rent before the pandemic and struggled to pay it during the pandemic, they will continue to struggle to pay the rent after the pandemic unless and until Congress invests in the long-term solutions that are needed to keep the lowest income people safely and affordably housed. Tania Rogers says she's hopeful the pandemic has created an opportunity to find those long-term solutions to keep families like hers in their homes. I feel strong that even if the moratorium was to end, in some form, fashion or way, things will work out, you know, and that could be just me purely walking off with faith. And I'm OK with saying that for ABC News. I'm Elizabeth Schulze in Washington. Our thanks to Elizabeth for that. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.